Friction. Oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you because I've got a pack of mat. All right. Can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack mat all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. That's it. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. <gasps> um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oh, you slippery. I know what I'll do. Hmm. Wow, talk about no friction. Are you all right? Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <gasps> the problem you had with the friction. I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. Huh. Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. We wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew. 
We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like, I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look, what is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great. Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey, look what I've got for you. Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep, now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. <laughs> Yeehaw! Pipe ball hands on the deck! Aye aye, mateys! Shiver me timbers! Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? with a map, and it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh, from here you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on, but where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy, monster on the horizon. Let him do it himself. He, <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly, I counted on myself. Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go one, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we Fixies remember how those early compasses were built. 
The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a float or inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. The remote. Hey, Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Should I let it go now? Whoa. Oops. <laughs> no, like. Hide somewhere. Nolik, she stole the remote. Nolik, where are you hiding? Nolik! Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh no, Nolik's in big time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm going to go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack a mat. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light-emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack a mat, I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough. All right, then. out for the remote's race. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If 
you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> the Shadow Play. Oh, hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Uh, I dropped a paper clip. Give me some light. You've got funny shadows, that's what. Hey, check this out. <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> and Simka is a goose. <laughs> she looks more like a moose. I do, huh? <laughs> All right, and take that. <laughs> oh. You're like real actors performing in a show. Uh-huh. Actors play in a theater, you know. And we're just under a bed. And so what? <gasps> How about we make our very own theater? A theater with shadows. Class! Tom Thomas, we need a, a piece of paper, a huge sheet. <laughs> it's really quite easy to make your own shadow theater. You can make the screen out of a white sheet or a big piece of paper. Next, make sure the room is dark and shine a desk lamp at the screen. Now, to make the shadows, just put yourself or a cardboard cutout between the lamp and the screen. Your shadow or the shadow of your puppets will come to life. But make sure that the audience sits on the other side of the screen. The play will be much more magical for them from that side. Tom Thomas, light! Oh, wow! Simka, you look totally like the real Red Riding Hood. Hello, dear granddaughter. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> no, like, come on, we're rehearsing. <laughs> the wolf's voice is funny. Grandmother, I never noticed what very big teeth you've got. They're so much better to eat you with, my dear. Yum, 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 yum. Let them out, wolf. Or I'll, or I'll get them out whoa, myself. Ha <laughs> ha, you'll stop me with that little stick? Hey, that's not in the fairy tale. But in the fairy tale, it's a normal hunter. And what do you think I am? Look for yourself. You're way too small to be the hunter. Fine, then go to your play without me. Well, I guess I'll have to make the hunter out of paper then. That's all. Take a break. I'm really thirsty. She was so salty, that grandma. No, Lick. Don't be upset. The wolf is huge, and I'm so little. Then let's make you bigger. You see? Now you're bigger. Yeah, you're right. And if we go back here, then I'm even bigger. Now you know. If you go back here near the lamp, your shadow will get bigger on the screen. Class! There are just so many different kinds of theaters in the world. In the dramatic theater, the actors speak the lines of the playwright. At the opera, the actors don't speak their lines. They sing them, accompanied by an orchestra. And here at the ballet, the performers don't speak or sing their parts. Here, the story is told with dance. There are also theaters where the performers are animals. In an animal theater, you can watch performances by cats and dogs, or goats and pigeons, or even bears and seals. 
There are also theaters where the stories are told by puppets. To tell the truth, the puppets are brought to life with the help of people. Yes, there are so many different kinds of theater. My favorite is the Shadow Theater. I think it's the most beautiful and mysterious theater of them all. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. And grandmother, what great big sharp teeth you've got. All the better to eat you up with, my dear. Um. Ooh, just wait. Aha, wolf. I've got you. The hunter looks so strong. You're a hunter? Then where's your gun? Why do I need a gun? You're so tiny I could use a fly swatter. <laughs> but I'd rather do it like this. Like what? With my bare hands. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> your favorite. Mine was the grandmother. Well, I think Red Riding Hood was the best. For me, the hunter. He was so mighty and so fearless. And for me, the special effects. <laughs> the team. The first period is almost over. Tom Thomas's team is leading to nothing. There's no getting around the difference in class. Nothing. And that's the end of the period. Time for the teams to take a break. This isn't a fair game. There's six of these guys and only two of us. Uh. Go ahead and call your classmates. I'll still outscore you. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Well, Tom Thomas, you asked for it. Young Fixies take classes and study just like human kids. But Fixie schools are quite a bit different than schools for people. To begin with, there are no more than ten students in a room. In Simka's class, for instance, there are six, and the children don't study in one place. On one day, the lesson could be inside a refrigerator, the next day in a computer, and the day after that in a vacuum cleaner. This is the best way for Fixies to learn all about them and put their new knowledge to the test. But the most important thing is that they have to learn to work as a team and help each other. Stronger Fixies helping weaker ones, and older Fixies helping younger ones. This is a must for Fixies, because appliances are so very big that if we didn't work as a team, we little Fixies could never get by. As the second period is about to begin, our full team comes to the ice! Huh? Introducing the engine of our class, my motor's roaring! And now the brains of our class, Digit! Okay, what's the score? Now here is the spirit of our class, Tula! Could I be our goalie? <laughs> and here she is, the face of our class, Verda! And oh, what a cute one. So you want to quit, Tom Thomas? I'm not afraid of you. Nulik, pass! Shoot! I'm calculating the angle to use. Whoa! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> pass it quick! Ugh. Quit sleeping! If you're gonna scream at me, I'm not going to play at all. Wow, that's some team you got there. Six <laughs> nothing! Oh. It's a blowout! Now the intermission before the final period. We're missing something here. I can tell you what. You mean confidence? Uh, calculations? Elegance? I know, speed. What's missing here's teamwork. Simka, you're right. It's one for all and all for one. Then here's what we're gonna do. We got it! Check, don't lose control. A line change on the floor. 
fly The puck is zooming towards the goal To score and break the tie It's one for all and all for one Great teamwork is a must Let's go and show them how it's done This game was made for us Hockey's our game get creamed like that. Because you're by yourself here, and we are a team. Team! The Wires. Quiet down. Get ready for your lesson. Be quiet. Quiet down, please. Oh, it's so hot here. In today's class, we'll learn about... Uh -oh. Whoa! What was that, huh? It must have been an earthquake. Yeah, it was an earthquake. Hooray! Eh, sorry there, Professor. Ooh, I have to find an outlet so I can plug in this fan. Ooh, it feels terribly hot. It sure does. Well, keep looking. You'll find one. <coughs> now then, where was I? Oh, right. Today? Oh! <coughs> no, it's impossible. In this whole laboratory, there isn't one free outlet. Look at this. Just pull out one of these wires, and then you'll have a free outlet. I can't. <laughs> I fear I could pull out a plug for something important. Uh, Volt himself would get all tangled up in these wires. Whew. Don't worry about it, Professor Eugenius. We'll find a free outlet for you. That's right, my colleague. A cup of tea will do you good, so just go relax. Thank you, my colleague. And as always, I'm eternally grateful. Pixies have opened schools for their children in all sorts of different places, like factories, stores, and warehouses. Anywhere where there's lots of machines and appliances and places to hide from humans. And this is where we hold our school, right here inside the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. It's a fantastic place for me to hold class. Every day, new devices, materials, toys, and even food are brought here for examination. And there are lots of scientific devices and tools to study here as well. But most importantly, we never need to hide from the head of the laboratory. Because my colleague, Professor Eugenius, is someone I'm proud to call a friend. He loves Fixies, helps us any time we need, and will never let our secret out. What should we do first? We have to start out with pulling apart these wires. <laughs> That'll take a second. Here. No, like, come help. Let's do this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just one more time. Stop it. I can't get out. Loosen the wires. We need to pull out this one. Stop this nonsense, will you? Thank you. Digit. Tiddish. Well, the way I see it, in order to get the knot out that's over here, we need to expand the loop that's over there. And then push that wire through it. And then do it again from the other end. Yeah. That's it. Very good, girls. Hey! Now pull it hard. Perfect. Hey, check it out. The screen wire up here isn't plugged into anything. Then no one's using it. So that means we should go and pull it out from the outlet. Got it. Oh. <laughs> Vera, here's another wire that isn't plugged in. I found another wire no one's 
confusing. Oh, I mean, Simka and I found it together. Nolik, why are you so upset? Because you guys are doing all the work. How about this wire? Nobody's checked it yet. Really? Oh, wow! What? Did you find some treasure, Nolik? Uh-huh. There are six free outlets under here. Great! Now Professor Eugenius can plug in his fan, and his kettle, and even his soldering iron. To get electricity to a device that doesn't use batteries, you need to plug a pair of wires into an outlet. But it's important not to let the wires touch one another, or the electricity can burn them out. That's why wires are covered in plastic or rubber, so the electricity won't pass from one wire to the other or to us when we touch them. So always be very careful with wires. And never, ever touch a bare wire. You could get killed by the electric shock. Oh, what would I do without my wonderful friends? Thank you. Ah, uh, sorry. I just, I didn't, I wanted to. Uh, I should go. Go ahead. That's a great idea. And we'll start our class. Uh, what were we talking about? All about wires. Well, it looks like our class is over. Time to go play.